Study in Hollywood. <laughs> The Jack Benny Program with Jack's distinguished guest, Mr. Harry S. Truman. Brought to you by Lux. New cream and rich Lux. The beauty soap with a special lather that actually helps purify your skin. And a new pink lotion Lux liquid to give dishes a diamond sparkle. Keep hands lotion lovely. Tonight, I've got news that tops them all. It's the biggest dishwashing news in 12 years. New pink lotion Lux liquid. It looks like a lotion, a soft, lovely pink, and feels like a lotion, and leaves your hands lotion lovely. Yet it cleans like no other liquid or powder ever. To introduce you to this great new product and several other favorites, Lever Brothers is sponsoring a rip-roaring $100,000 Cash Star sweepstakes with $25,000 first prize and over 2,000 other cash prizes. Your official entry blank is in the mail now. Just fill it in with your name and address and send it in. You may win up to $25,000 in cash. You'll also receive valuable money-saving coupons on several terrific Lever products. So send in your entry in Lever's $100,000 cash star sweepstakes. And with your Lux Liquid coupon, get new pink lotion, Lux Liquid. in the closet. I don't want it. I'm not going to do a show today. Jack, there was no reason for you to rush off the stage in the middle of rehearsal. The show is 20 seconds too long. As the director, I had to cut out something. All right, it's 20 seconds too long. You didn't have to cut out that line. But Jack... Look at it. I don't care how long it was. I'm not going to do that show unless you put that line back into it. And okay. <laughs> Hey, Joe. Yeah? Put back that line about Benny's blue eyes. <laughs> and tell him to put it in exactly the way it was. And put it in exactly the way it was. Well, how was it? Well, the girl says to Benny, your eyes are blue, aren't they? And Benny says, Bluer than the seat of the last man on a short toboggan. <laughs> oh, brother! <laughs> now see that that stays in. Okay. I never saw it to fail. Always aggravate me before a show. Rochester. Uh, yes. Before I get made up, maybe I ought to shave. Huh? Oh, well, let me give you the equipment. All right. I'm so mad. Hell, you razor. Shaving cream and your baseball cap. <laughs> I don't know, I look kind of silly, don't I? I know, but you haven't bought a razor blade in ten years. <laughs> oh, well. Come in. shave and get made up. I'm busy now, so don't bother me. Oh, now, wait a minute, Jack. I think you ought to hear the commercial the sportsmen are going to do. You know they're going to do the minute waltz. The minute waltz? Yeah. For the commercial? That's right. All right. Well, let's hear it, and then, then let me get okay, through with Okay, go everything. ahead, Collins. Go ahead, let's hear it. Wait a minute, 
Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Just one. Don, I'm terribly sorry. I forgot to tell you, but the director came in and told us that we were 20 seconds too long, you see. So the boys will have to do the minute waltz in 40 seconds. <laughs> the minute waltz in 40 seconds? That's ridiculous. Look, Jack, if you want 20 seconds, why don't you take out that crummy line about your blue eyes? <laughs> that line stays in. Oh, brother. <laughs> I cut that out. Now, look, Don, they're going to have to do the minute waltz in 40 seconds, and that settles it. Look, Jack, if they sing that fast, nobody will understand when they say that new Lux is cream enriched with the lather, that cream softens skin, and helps purify away complexion troublemakers. That's very important beauty news. Well, Don, that's your problem. Anyway, they will be able to do it in 40 seconds. But, Jack, it's just impossible I, I, I'll to I'll bet you a dollar. dollar. I'll bet you a dollar they can do the minute oh, well, I'll take seconds. that bet. All right, right, here, and I'll let you hold the money. Okay. All right, I'll show you they can do it in 40 seconds. Now, take it. of Mr. Truman and me, taken right under that photograph of President Eisenhower. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I, you say your son took this picture? Yes, and will you autograph it for me? Well, I'll be glad to. Of course yes. I will. Pen right here somewhere. By the way, mm -hmm. how did you happen to be there with Mr. Truman? Oh, oh, sit down. Sit down. Okay. Um, well, you see, I... Um, uh, you see, Mr. Truman and I, we've been friends for many, many years, for a long time. And I gave a concert in Kansas City, oh, some time ago, and it was done for the Musicians' Pension Fund, you see, and Mr. Truman ran this concert. So when the concert was over, he came backstage, and he invited me to come to Independence, Missouri, to visit the Truman Library. He wanted me to really see this library, it's just wonderful. So, I got up real early the next morning, and drove all the way to Independence. I was there. Oh, were you? Oh, good, good. I, 
I hope you enjoyed it. I, I thought I was in rare form with the violin last night. I, uh, what did you think of my uh, rendition of the, the Mendelssohn Concerto? Mendelssohn Concerto? Oh, you must have played that after I left. <laughs> you mean you left in the middle of my concert? Oh, well, I, uh, I had to go to the airport to meet some uh, dignitaries coming in from Washington. Oh, so I see. Well, I guess it must have been important because quite a few other people got up and left at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> but I say, this is a lovely place, you know. I, I couldn't help thinking as I came in here into the entrance here what a beautiful library this is, what a wonderful building. You know? Yes, it is, isn't it? Mr. Truman is very proud of it. You know it represents an investment of over $20 million. Twenty million dollars. Gee, <laughs> yeah. let's see. At a return of five percent, the profit would be. Uh, oh, there's no profit. No, no profit. No. <laughs> the money that built the Harry S. Truman Library was contributed from all over the country, so it really belongs to the people of the United States. Oh, oh, I understand. Yeah. You know, uh, Miss... Uh, Conway. Miss, Conway. Miss Conway. Yes, Miss Conway. You know, in my hometown in Waukegan, Illinois, they did a very nice thing recently, you know. They, they're building a new junior high school, and they're naming it after me. Well, isn't that nice? Isn't it? I think it is. And they have two other high schools there, junior high school, the Daniel Webster and the Thomas Jefferson. There. Imagine. Webster, Jefferson, and Benny. <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm in pretty good company, I think, don't you? What a shame the other two don't know about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would think so. Oh. Hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dickie. Oh. Oh, do you know that Boy Scout? Yes, yes. Uh, this morning, he helped me across the street. <laughs> well, you can go in now, Mr. Benny. Oh, oh, thank you. Right through this door, and then down the short hall at the right. And Mr. Truman will yes. see you now. Yeah, da dee da 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 dee da da I'm certainly glad to see you. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Well, yes, I'll be glad to. I'm certainly glad that you invited me over here to visit your library. Always wanted to see it. Well, I'm certainly glad you can make it. Thank you. Enjoy yourself. I, I know I will. And uh, incidentally, uh, Mr. Truman, it was an honor, a real honor, having you stay through my entire violin concert last night, especially with all those dignitaries arriving at the airport. What dignitaries? <laughs> You certainly have a nice office here. Do you spend much time here? Yes, I spend a great deal of time here. It's, uh, in fact, I'm here every day in the week when I'm in, uh, at home at all. And we have plenty of work to do. As a matter of fact, I have a staff of four secretaries and sometimes five who do nothing but answer the bushels of mail I get. Well, I, I know what you mean. I, I mean, answering uh, the mail can really be a problem. You know, Mr. Truman, in 1946, I had 12 people, not just 12, working night and day just uh, on letters that I received. 1946? Uh, wasn't that the year you had I Can't Stand Jack Benny contest? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, my sister won first prize. <laughs> Tell me, uh, Mr. Truman, all these things you offer out, all these mementos when you well, were president? Well, not all of them. A great many of them are things that were accumulated while I was in the White House. And uh, they are of uh, use now. Here's a thing right here that's interesting. That's the seal of the President of the United States. Uh -huh. And it's made out of solid gold. Gee. And I uh, put gold. Got some other things here. This is a globe over here that's a... Uh, that I used while I was in the White House, and I always keep it in sight with all the trouble spots in the world turned up. 
always have a notion that sometime or other maybe I can do something about it, but I doubt it. And I'm glad you'd like to look for that oh, presidential yeah. seal. Solid gold. Solid gold. <laughs> Now, since we've been talking about the things uh, that are of interest here in this uh, building, I thought maybe <coughs> you might be interested in the purpose of the library. I, I certainly am. Its intention is uh, so the youngsters, students particularly, can learn what the office means, what the presidents have to do, and what they have to do to keep this free government of ours and keep it going as it was from the time of our founding fathers today. It's the greatest government in the history of the world. And I take great pleasure in uh, showing the uh, youngsters what we have. Now, we have back here about five million documents that were accumulated while I was president of the United States. And every document that the president handles is uh, really an official document, whether it's a, an official paper or a letter taken the height off a musician when he criticizes your daughter. <laughs> Take a look at it. Oh, fine. Go and take a look at it. I certainly would like to see them. All right. Yes. Jack, Jack. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, Jack, we're entering a presidential room in the library, which uh, shows the jobs that the president has to do. And there's a list of them. Yeah, notice says the president's job is really six jobs. He's chief executive, chief of state, legislative planner and partner with Congress, head of his political party, commander in chief of the armed forces, and director of foreign relations. Thank you. Know, I just read all of that without my glasses. Now, Jack, we come to the first case in the presidential room which has to do with the job as chief executive of the United States, the greatest job in the history of the world. And as you see, he has various things to do. There's a meet meeting with his advisors and the members of con congressional committees. There's a cabinet meeting. And over here, you see where General Marshall is being sworn in as chief justice of the United States, as private chief justice of the United States, as secretary of state. And then afterwards, he went to uh, Harvard and made that great speech which ended up with the Marshall Plan, and which I think is one of the greatest things that ever happened in the history of this country. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Truman, may I ask you a personal question, why, please? Certainly. Well, why is it that whenever you want to emphasize something, you always gesture with your hands like this? I know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got that way, making speeches to the people, and I was trying to win them. Oh, <laughs> Why do you do that? Well, you cover up that wristwatch, pray somebody to steal it? <laughs> <laughs> it started out that way, and then it turned out to be a habit. <laughs> <laughs> and over on this side, you find another mother, number of jobs for the president that she said. She didn't make an Indian chief in the SO game. You see there a picture with Jack Benny in it. See where? Don't you see him? Oh, yeah, that's when I did a show. For that's it. right. And what a wonderful show it was. We all uh, appreciated it very highly. Well, thank you. And then here's an officer that I uh, received for imitating Mr. Kel Keltenborn when he said I couldn't be elected in 1948. And I understand he received one for imitating me, imitating him. <laughs> 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 it took me in there with all the rest of them. Come on, Jack. I'm coming. Jack, <laughs> 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 the present. That's as a legislative partner and uh, 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 one who works with Congress to get the certain messages through and bills that are necessary to make the country run. You see up there copy of a message on the State of the Union. You see here a picture of the Big Four as they were constituted when I was President of the United States. And a microphone, the first one I ever used, and down here is a pen that I used to sign most important bills with. You, see, you know, uh, Mr. Truman, I was thinking how much time it must have uh, required 
you know, you had to, do, uh, to read. You had to do so much reading before you signed anything. That's true. Uh, without you to it. I had read all the books in the independent library between the ages of nine and fourteen, and oh. it was no trouble for me to read, and in those days we didn't have any television. <laughs> That's right. You know, when I was nine years old, we, we didn't have television either. Of course, we didn't use it. See, the Indians were real then. <laughs> You'll see here the first job of the President of the United States as head of his political party, mm -hmm. one which I like very much. You'll see in this case the pictures of what the President does as head of his political party. That's when Dewey was elected President of the United States. <laughs> Next, this case shows... Uh, that presence in one of his most important roles as Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. And uh, you see in this case a uh, model of the first atomic submarine. I was present when the keel was laid. Here's a model of the jet uh, flying machine that was uh, first made while I was uh, in the White House. And this uh, model here is a model of the engine in the old B-36, the great oh, bomber. Then you see up there in the middle of the picture my chief of staff, uh, General Vandenberg, Admiral Benfield, and General Bradley. Oh, okay, Mr. Coomey, not my name. I remember when that picture was taken, because I happened to be in Washington, D.C. at the time. And what a thrill it was meeting all these great men. I found out one thing, that the more important a man is, the friendlier he is. You're absolutely right. I agree with you 100%. That's as true as it can be. And Jack, from what you say, I imagine that you found General Vandenberg a very interesting person. Well, unfortunately, I, I didn't get to meet General Vandenberg. You see, the day I was supposed to meet him, I had a luncheon appointment with uh, Admiral Denfield. Then you met Admiral Denfield, I suppose. Well, <laughs> so you see, just as I was leaving, the hotel room, see, to have lunch with uh, Admiral Denfield, I got uh, a telephone call from General Bradley. <laughs> no, wrong number. Of course, that was your fault. I mean, that could happen, you know, under any administration. <laughs> yes. Aren't you talking a long way around to tell me she didn't meet anybody? Oh, no, 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 no. On the contrary, Mr. Truman. I did meet one very important person whose, whose grasp on the international situation was absolutely amazing. You know, in fact, I had lunch with him twice. Uh, his name was Lynch, Edward Lynch. Edward J. Lynch? Yes, yes. Do you know him? Well, I should. He was my chauffeur. <laughs> <laughs> you, you must have paid him well. He, he bought the lunch. <laughs> Jack, in these cases here, shows the president as the maker of the foreign policy of the United States. Nobody can decide what the foreign policy is but the president. You see, in this case, there's a model in Williamsburg on which a great many most important meetings were held. Up there is the table on which the United Nations nation got the picture of the signing of the United oh, Nations yeah. Charter. That's one of the most interesting. Well, you find the table on which that started with sound down in front here. Everybody gets a chance to see it. Oh, by the way, Mr. Truman, uh, what's, in, uh, what's in that case there? Well, those are things that were presented to me when I was 75 years old on the 8th of May. 75 years old. Gosh, you're looking wonderful. Well, I feel that way. I'd like you to tell me the truth if I ask you a question. Will you do that? What's that? How old are you? <laughs> well, I said, I want you to tell me the truth, and I want to know how old you are. <laughs> well... From that picture. It did make it a little difficult. <laughs> Well, Jack, that uh, takes care of the six jobs of the President of the United States. 
These other cases over here, as you see, contain pictures and historical documents from every president of the United States to date. Uh, I am interested in all of them, particularly in uh, Jefferson and Polk and Jackson. And, Jack, I presume that your favorite would be Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln, my favorite president? Uh, president? Why would you say that? Well, I thought of any man who'd walk 12 miles to return a library book and save three cents would be the kind of man that you'd call. <laughs> Come on now, let's go on back to the office and we'll stop at some of the other ones. Yes, sir. Miss Connolly, would you see that Mr. Benny and I are not disturbed for a while? Yes, sir. Let me tell you why this new striped toothpaste gives you the benefits of toothpaste plus mouthwash. Stripe begins with the finest plain white toothpaste. This will clean and polish your teeth and protect your breath as well as any white toothpaste. But here's Stripe's new protection, the super mouthwash ingredient hexachlorophene, the famous germ killer used by physicians and dentists themselves. If your toothpaste has these red stripes, you know you're getting germ-killing hexachlorophene, the best protection available. Stripe kills tooth decay germs better than any plain toothpaste. And Stripe kills bad breath germs even better than the best-selling mouthwash. So be fair to yourself and your family. Get the benefits of toothpaste plus mouthwash. Get Stripe. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the show. It was a great honor having Mr. Truman as my guest. And I do wish, I truly wish that everybody in the United States of America, every man, woman, and child, could visit the Truman Library because it is really something to see. Uh, next week, be sure to see George Goebel, presented by Stripe, Lever Brothers' new red and white toothpaste. And then I'll be back two weeks from today. Thank you very much. The most powerful idea in the world today is peace. To strengthen the United Nations work for peace, write for a free booklet to U.S. or the U.N. Box 1959, Washington 13, D.C. Next week, Stripe, the new hexachlorophene toothpaste that gives you the benefits of toothpaste plus mouthwash, will bring you the George Goebel Show with his guest star, Rudy Ballack. The Jack Benny Program is a JNM production. Now stay tuned for that panel that gives away $50 every time they miss. Spent, Chris.